Hi everybody, it's Ben here, and if you're like me, you're pretty excited about Ford's new all-electric pickup truck, the F-150 Lightning. But what about Ford's other electric pickup truck? Americans love our pickup trucks. We love that macho, outdoorsy feeling, and we fantasize about off-roading and driving through mud in slow motion. Well, for over 30 years, the F-150 has been the best-selling vehicle in the United States. The strange thing, though, is that we had electric pickup trucks over 20 years ago, and that included Ford manufacturing the Ford Ranger EV from 1997 to 2002. That time period is what some of us know as the EV1 era. GM's EV1 was a fantastic electric vehicle, and it was well documented in the movie Who Killed the Electric Car? If you haven't seen it, go out and see it right away. It's an amazing story. And since the EV1 was a GM car, they also used many of those same parts to build an all-electric Chevy S10 pickup truck. So two decades ago, we had factory-built electric pickups from multiple manufacturers. So today, let's take a look at Ford's other electric truck, the Ranger EV. The first thing you notice is that it looks like a truck. From the outside, there's very little that actually shows that it's electric. Overall, it's using standard sheet metal. In fact, the bed even still has the door to access the gas cap, although there's no gas in this truck. Most of these trucks were white, most went to fleets, and most of them were leased. But there were some trucks that were sold outright, and they're still out there. In fact, you can see some of those listed in the EV album. Inside the cab, again, it looks nearly identical to the Gas Ranger, right down to the manual crank windows. A few minor details are different, like the gear selector having an E drive mode. And instead of a tachometer, there's a range remaining gauge. This was a rear-wheel drive, standard cab pickup. Essentially, it was just a basic stock pickup, except that instead of a gas engine, it had an electric motor. This was a Siemens AC induction motor and used a 3 to 1 gear reduction going to the half shafts of the rear wheels. The motor was rated at 90 horsepower, but the peak power, just over 87 kilowatts, was very similar to the 117 or 119 horsepower of the four-cylinder Ranger gas engines of that time period. Unfortunately, since the motor and transaxle are mounted together, it's hard to get a good view of just the motor. Now, on the other hand, the liquid-cooled inverter was mounted behind the motor in the location normally used to hold the spare tire, so we can get a good view of that. Like the EV1, the Ford Ranger EV first had lead-acid batteries and then went to nickel-metal hydride batteries. The 1998 model year had 39 8-volt batteries weighing nearly 2,000 pounds. That's probably one of the reasons that, although this was a two-wheel drive vehicle, the Ranger EV was built using the 4x4 chassis. The batteries were mounted in two layers in a coffin-like battery box mounted below the truck. Officially, the truck had about a 65-mile range, and the nickel battery pack boasted 82 miles. Of course, your mileage may vary. What's interesting is that that's approximately the same capacity battery pack and range as the Nissan LEAF when it came out. If a person took one of these trucks and simply gave it a proper upgrade to modern lithium batteries, we'd be able to get some pretty good range out of it. I actually just took some salvaged lithium batteries, threw them in the bed of this particular truck, and was able to get a range of over 100 miles. That was pretty fun because it did let me take the truck out and show it off at a whole number of different events. The charge port is located in front, built into the grill, and it's one of the few easy-to-spot differences from the gas version of the truck. Unlike the EV1 and Chevy S10, which used inductive charging paddles, the Ford Ranger EV used a conductive Avcon claw connector. What's interesting about this is that it's an early version of the J1772 standard, which is what we use today. That means that even though this connector may look strange, it uses the same signals as current EVSEs. That also means it's pretty easy to DIY an adapter and charge the truck on a modern level 2 EVSE. The air-cooled 6 kilowatt onboard charger is mounted under the hood on top of the other components. Now, unfortunately, there's no frunk on this truck. The rest of the space under the hood is taken up by the 12 volt battery, the DC to DC converter, heat, air conditioning, power brakes, and other typical components. Now, what about towing? The specs for towing on the F-150 Lightning look really good, but was an EV from 20 years ago up to that task? Well, apparently it was because I got this particular truck with an aftermarket two inch hitch 
already installed on it. Since this truck was originally owned by a park service, I'm pretty sure it probably towed a trailer with lawnmowers and other maintenance equipment on it. The pattern of scratches and dents on the back of it seems to indicate that it saw a hard work clearing brush, and it may have even towed a wood chipper. So I thought I'd do a little towing test. And no, I didn't have train cars handy, or even an Airstream, but I did have a 1960s travel trailer, which I took out with the Ranger EV. Overall, I was really happy with how the truck tows. There's no manual gears to shift through or clutch to burn out. And all that torque at low speeds means it's easy to get going. On top of that, regenerative brakes make it easy to control the speed of the trailer without wearing out brake pads. Of course, these are all the reasons that make almost any EV great to tow with. A two inch receiver on an EV is also a handy way to connect other accessories, whether that's a bike rack, a cargo carrier, or even a patio umbrella for tailgating. When people have asked me about when EVs will really take off in the United States, I've told them it's when we have mainstream electric pickups. As workhorses, we ask a lot of these vehicles, but I also think that means that when we have EV trucks, we reach the point where we can have any type of vehicle as electric. It will do anything we ask of it, and it will do it better than any gas version. Features like home power backups, and just how well electrics tow are going to be the killer apps that help convert consumers from gas to electric. Thanks for spending a little time with me today to learn more about Ford's other electric truck, the Ranger EV. I'm really looking forward to the new generation of electric trucks from Ford, Tesla, Rivian, and others. And this time, instead of being compliance vehicles, they are feature-laden, mass-marketed, and driven by consumer demand. See you next time. And as Nikki always says, keep evolving.